Hi everyone, uh, my name is Joseph Kuo. I'm actually in the lab of Dr. Ronald uh, Francis Shell. And in this lab, we actually look at Lyme arthritis with regards to T cells that cause inflammation and the swelling. How did you end up in graduate school? I ended, up in, I ended up in graduate school because since when I was younger in high school, I was actually raised in Taipei, Taiwan. And I actually lived through a time of SARS in 2003. So since then, I became really interested in the medical field. And it's fascinating to see so many doctors and nurses and people in the laboratory trying to figure out this puzzle together. What are your pet peeves? My pet peeves? My biggest pet peeves are actually uh, people who don't wash their hands after using their restroom. You see this around campus at Union South and anywhere, everywhere around the world, even in New Orleans when I was there for a conference. So it was kind of shocking, you know, for me, you know, still hygiene lab. Working in hygiene, <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah. Proper washing techniques, I think that'll definitely uh, decrease a lot of um, possible infections. So what to you has been your greatest personal achievement outside of work? I would say my greatest achievement would be times where I could reach out to people around me. I'm not the person who needs trophies or awards or, you know, bling blings. I'm actually a man of faith, so I'm Catholic. I go to St. Paul's on State Street. I sing for Jesus on Sundays in Mass. I like to become a man of virtue if I can. So that's why I enjoy reaching out to people. That's why I became interested in teaching, because I want to make a difference in the lives of the younger generation. I hope that I can empower them and make them build their own confidence so that they will be secure to do well in their job in the future. And just, you know, interaction with friends and just see how people around you are doing. You know, buy them a muffin on their birthday <laughs> just to show them some love and care. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your research. Okay. So with regards to Lyme arthritis, there's Lyme disease. So there's the tick that will actually transmit a bacterium into human hosts after blood meals. But for a lot of these folks, they might not notice uh, where they've been bitten because they might be at the back of their head or somewhere in the back, right? So for these folks, even after they're treated with antibiotics, 10% of these folks would still develop the chronic uh, stage of arthritis where they have massive swelling and pain with movement. So the question is, what's actually causing the arthritis in these patient who's been bitten by a tick with the bacterium being transmitted. It's possible that the bacterium is persisting. A lot of people notice that it could also be due to the immune system. A lot of people think the immune system is actually protective, and that's true. But for sometimes, they would also produce a lot of chemicals or toxins or uh, called cytokines and interleukins to try to get rid of the pathogen. But these toxins, I'm using this a bit too much, sorry. <laughs> but toxins, these are products from your immune system, could also further cause harm in your cell with your normal cells. So I think for me, that's why I feel like immunology is really sexy. Because there's so many different things to be discovered. There's a lot that's been discovered already, but I like to look at things more comprehensively. What's happening to the supporting roles, or the person who is in charge of the lights, or the person who is in charge of uh, the curtains in the stage, rather than just looking at Romeo and Juliet in the center. What is most frustrating about research to you? Okay. I would say the most frustrating I've experienced is something pretty much most grad students have experienced nowadays, even scientists and postdocs, and it's the one thing I mentioned before, funding. So when I first started, I noticed that most of my cohorts won't teach or do research in a university setting. But nowadays, when I ask them the same question again about what they would do after graduation, they actually just tell me, oh, I'm going to go work for an industry or nonprofit or open a bakery. That actually happened to someone I know in my program. How do you think you compare to the, the stereotype of a scientist? I'm mostly working on the bench or the hood, you know, with mice and cells. So it's slumber. You wear a lab coat, you wear goggles. You wear pants and shoes. I could be an introvert sometimes, but a lot of people, a lot of my friends actually told me I'm an extrovert. Maybe because of my loud, loud voice. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like for me though, I do enjoy interacting with people. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. That's it? <laughs> really? <laughs>
So one thing I want to mention is that for a lot of people, including students, they view grad students or scientists as the hunchback of Notre Dame or the Phantom of the Opera. Like they're in a closet, as I mentioned before, they're in their own space. But for us, we're all human beings too. We have other identities too. I play volleyball, I injure my foot, I was a handicap for a while, and then I started doing yoga. Oh my gosh, my glasses are still in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that will be your ending. <laughs> That's it? Oh wow. Oh, okay, sorry. That looks great.